wow, this thing has tons of torque. It has nowhere to break, so it's really tough to control a wheelie. The throttle is stuck. Um, it's the on and off switch also, so it won't turn off the wheel. This is why you'd want a mechanical shutoff valve or shutoff switch of some sort. In the meantime, I'm going to get some pliers. I had to replace the handlebars, the throttle, and a new seat. I didn't get hurt at all. I just fell Did my butt. Just fall off? Once it got so high, it just it engaged and it went. Boy, you're lucky you didn't now here's the problem is I need a new seat now. Electric, lightweight dirt bike, more in depth here. And these are all the other creations I made. Super fast electric. All right, so the whole purpose to build this one was to do the opposite of this one because this one was just too heavy so it had double the power but it's just double the weight and probably more because the batteries are 120 amp hour batteries um, 88.2 volts so the batteries themselves are super heavy so this is kind of more like an enduro or something that could go like it's almost like a sport bike or something it's so heavy you know so the whole goal with this one was cut half the weight or more and keep the torque the weight ratio really high because these motors produce so much torque and see what we could do with it um, with that said, it works great. It's def I definitely recommend going more of the Suron uh, route where they're super lightweight, smaller motor, smaller battery, and it all works together instead of going um, opposite. Th this actually has two QS138 motors, two volt holes, and um, huge battery. And this thing produces tons of amps, so because they're all in, on the same jack shaft over here. Fast, fun, just heavy but more of like a show, you know, something like from Mad Max or a chopper style. People love the look of it, but if you want something more practical, that's what this design was for right here. All right, so this build was basically from a fat tire bike that I was trying to manipulate where I could put a QS138 version two motor with the uh, Voltol uh, sine wave controller and see if I could get it to be with the lightweight of a fat tire bike to kind of get that feel of like a Suron or something real lightweight and have tremendous torque. Well, what ended up happening is this motor just ripped the back axle apart of the fat tire bike. Those are only like eight millimeters um, thick. So the tires and the, the, the brakes of the original fat tire bike I was trying to use, had to just get rid of those and I actually had a upgrade and get um, dirt bike wheels front and back and then dirt bike forks and then a, um, a shock and then I had a um, basically re-weld the whole swing arm here um, and then make a bearing here a pivot point and then have the pivot point from here to here uh, for the back suspension um, and then that way the motor the torque of the motor could the wheels were able to handle the torque of the motor um, so the front forks here, um, the rake angle is very steep. Um, that wasn't on purpose. That was um, something that I was stuck with because of the original frame of the fat tire bike I started with. Um, I made all this steel, I shaped it all, but the, you can see the original fork tube right here, the head tube. That I, I didn't change. So this, that's just the, the rake angle to get the height I wanted was 12 inches from the ground up to the lowest point, which would be that pulley. That uh, was the ground clearance I wanted. With that, this was the rig angle that was achieved. So it's very steep, it's not um, perfect. Um, the only way to fix that would be able to cut off this head tube and re-weld it, and I didn't want to do that on this particular one. This is more of a prototype. I wanted to mention the reason why the controller is under the seat is because the original fat tire bike frame wouldn't allow the controller to fit on underneath compartment. So that's done with that. Then if we move to the motor, this is a, a two-step gear reduction system. I think the Suron has that too. You got the um, motor um, spinning a belt to a pulley. And this, um, I changed, I got the gear ratio where I wanted to get the end results to eight to one. Um, so I believe this is a 22 tooth to a 40 tooth 
And then on the other side, I'll show you in a second, um, is I think a 13 to a 45 tooth. Um, and I th it's something similar to that and it all comes to eight to one. Uh, so I think that's perfect for the bottom end and get some top end. Um, it's always best to have your higher RPMs with the belt system and then your lower RPMs um, with the chain. That achieves the best of both worlds. Um, um, you got front disc brakes. Everything's dirt bike quality here. So that, that's probably gonna beat like the Suron where that, those aren't as heavy duty, more more in between a bike and a dirt bike. These are actually hydraulic big disc brakes with nice big rotors. Um, only on the front though. The back I didn't do because I wanted a 19 inch front and a 19 inch rear. Um, and they don't make those easy to get uh, for the rear. So um, they come in like 14 and 16 inch wheels. I didn't want that smaller wheel look in the back. I wanted it to look more like the Suron where they're both, I think Surons have 19 fronts and rears. So with that said, it only has one wheel hub for one thing to bolt onto it. So that side has a sprocket and there's not any side you could bolt a, um, a disc brake to, to have a rear brake. So you could always, um, I wasn't really worried about the rear brake. This was again, the prototype, but you could always uh, do regening regen braking from the uh, motor. I'm not a fan of that because it never lets the motor relax. It's always working. So, and it's not really predictable as far as how much control you get. It's very light, very light. The original frame of the fat tire bike and I kept the crank where you would normally pedal and I put bearings and a shaft, um, um, a 5 8 I believe it was a 5 8 um, axle and then I got the right pulley and everything here and it made a, a little chain tensioner, made my own pegs. And then I made my, um, my maintenance plate here. So if you take out all these screws, this pops out and inside you're going to have all the works. So you're going to have, you're going to have the, um, the batteries, which just comes out the 21 S, um, one P, um, it comes out to 22 amp hours. So it's perfect for the weight ratio keep it light. They're uh, lipopolymers, um, which is what I prefer. Um, lithium ions are great, but I just like the low voltage sag lipopolymers get, and you get just a little bit more discharge, actually a lot more discharge power. Um, the BMS in here is only controlled for charging, not discharging. So this thing's full out, ready to go power. There's nothing in the way. The controller has all the safety features um, to prevent any battery over discharging. You could set it all in the controller. Um, this has a fuse around here, um, a built-in shunt around here. The shunt reads to the meter here and allows you to know the current, the volts, and amp hours. Everything passing through the battery, so the controller gets read right here. Um, this has uh, two temperature sensors, one for the controller, one for the motor right here. And this also has a um, power switch, one for... I set it at 75 amps, which is half power, and then I set it at its recommended full power, 150 amps. Um, you could push these to 220 amps. I've seen people on Endless Fear doing that, and that's fine. But this, on, 150 is all you need. I actually, like I was saying, I already flipped this thing. Uh, it's, you don't, there's to be stupid, and it's just gonna be more wear and tear on everything. So no reason to go 220, 150. It's kind of what, um, it comes stock, so it's ready to rock and roll. This seat is the new seat I made. It's a, uh, a saddle seat for a, one of those like old school bicycles. And then I, I welded, um, made it, fabricated it here to fit. If you see anything that's not painted, it's because I had to do it after the painting, which is always a problem. It's always a, a shame when you have something painted and if you realize you have to fix something and then re-weld and you know, it's hard to repaint it. So um, this is not comfortable like it looks. It's so hard, but it does have a nice, um, banana here it's for your butt to sit in and it is further back than the original seat if you looked at the original seat of the first video you can see how far I was sitting up which was not where it needed to be right here is where it needs to be um, and the, the whole reason why this seat is here is because I flipped it and the seat broke off the original seat yeah the only ride videos I have um, are uh, the Suron um, you could check him out on his YouTube and Instagram he came over and did a um, little interview with me and he liked this bike a lot so he wanted to take it out because he does Surons and stuff so he did a little video here in the front um, I'll, I'll post his video too that he did in my house 
and then I'll post some shots, a video of him riding this right around now. Right now. Just be careful because <laughs> there's no rear brakes, so. Did you get to switch it? Yeah. This thing is a beast. How's it feel as far as the power goes? So much power. And like you said, it doesn't care how fast you're going. It just gives it to you. Wow. Watch out. 